Hello and welcome to Graphing Displacement and Velocity, SBH3U. Today our objective is to create and analyze displacement time graphs, velocity time graphs, um, and working in one dimension use the slopes and areas to find the velocities and, uh, and the displacement. Before you begin, please make sure that you've got your uh, graphing displacement and velocity worksheet handy, um, some graph paper, a pencil, and a ruler. You'll need this in order to complete the exercises. So while you're working today, please be sure and pause the video as we introduce the questions. Go ahead and work on your own, complete the exercise, and then we'll come back and discuss it together. Okay, so the first problem. Leah's jogging at constant speed for a minute. She spends the first 30 seconds that minute jogging north and the second 30 seconds jogging south. Her velocity, um, defined as the change in her displacement, was 3 meters per second north for the first 30 seconds and 3 meters per second south for the second 30 seconds. So your challenge is to plot her velocity on the grid below with time on the horizontal axis and velocity on the vertical axis. Be sure and label your axes and note that you're not going to be able to connect this whole thing up with one straight line. There's going to be a discontinuity of 30 seconds. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and do that, please. Alright, so let's discuss this problem a bit more. <coughs> So if we define our axes, um, we have our velocity in meters per second, our time in seconds, and of course in this case, because we are running north for the thir first 30 seconds, we have a positive velocity, and we're running south for the last 30 seconds, and we've got a negative velocity. So this is what your graph should look like here. So now let's talk about the area underneath the curve. So as we've covered before, the area under velocity time graph will be equal to the displacement. And we can use the graph to calculate the displacement at various increments. Please do that now, pause the video, and return when you've done that. Don't forget that the area under the horizontal axis will be negative. Okay, so hopefully you filled out your graph now, but we'll do one example here. Um, at 40 seconds, we have the area under the graph is the expression given here. The area above is 30 seconds times 3 meters per second equals 90 meters plus 10 seconds times negative 3 meters per second gives us a total of 60 meters. And if we fill out the net rest of the displacement time chart, um, it looks like this. At zero time, zero displacement. Um, moves up at 30 seconds, we have our maximum displacement, and then it drops back down to zero by 60 seconds, as we would expect. So let's go ahead and plot the uh, points in this table. Um, with time on the horizontal axis. So we're going to get a displacement um, a displacement time graph. Go ahead and pause the movie, please, and do that now. Okay, so this is what we should look like. Uh, we've got uh, a pretty simple triangle where the displacement increases as we move away from origin, and then when we turn around and come back, the displacement decreases back down to And, of course, Leah's uh, at zero displacement at the end of one minute, as we would expect, at her starting point. Okay, but um, we can find the average velocity over any time interval by taking the slope from the displacement time graph. So please go ahead and get... Uh, determine the average velocity over the one-minute time interval. 
and hopefully you got zero meters per second. Since the displacement was zero, that divided by the 60 seconds is zero meters per second. All right, um, so let's look at this displacement time graph of a radio controlled car. We've got positive moving forward, negative moving back, of course. Um, go ahead and on a separate sheet of graph paper, describe each of the segment in words and sketch the corresponding distance time graph. Notice that it's distance time, not displacement time, so it won't look the same. And when you're finished, also sketch the velocity time graph. Go ahead and pause the movie, please, and work on that. Okay, describing the segments in words. Uh, you should practice doing this. It's a good exercise, and it will be on various quizzes. So we have the first segment between 0 and 2 seconds. The car is traveling at 4 meters per second forward. Right? Its displacement is increasing, and it's at a constant rate, and our slope gives us 4 meters per second. Now what about between 2 and 4 seconds? Well, we can see that our slope is 0, so, um, so our speed is 0 and our velocity is 0. The car is at rest. Now, between 4 seconds and 9 seconds, we have a negative slope, meaning that the, uh, meaning that the car is moving backwards. We can extract that slope um, pretty simply and get the car moving backwards at 2 meters per second. Finally, the segment between 9 and 10 seconds. Again, the slope is 0. The car is at rest. Now, in terms of the distance time graph, um, this, is a, this is a very important exercise to, um, to work on. So, um, please go ahead and do that. Pause the movie, go through and calculate the distance time graph, not the displacement time graph. All right, so uh, the first segment is given here. We've got, again, always define our axes, distance in meters versus time in seconds. And as the car is moving forward, uh, this segment looks exactly like our velocity time graph, or our, sorry, our displacement time graph. And similarly, the car being at rest gives us zero slope, zero change in distance across that two second segment. Now here's what's interesting, where previously, we remember that since the car was moving backwards, we had a negative slope moving downward to the 9 second point. In this case, because we're only plotting distance traveled, that segment is in fact positive. So the car is moving, and all we're measuring is movement, not distance when we're doing displacement. The car is moving, just moving slower. It's got a smaller slope, 2 meters per second. And the last segment, of course, the car isn't moving, it's at rest, and again, negative slope for the last second. So this is a very important distinction, and you need to be able to uh, draw these distance time graphs and move back and forth between distance time and displacement time graphs. Okay, sketching the corresponding velocity time graph. Please go ahead and pause the movie and do that now. Uh, welcome back. Here is my sketch of the velocity time graph. You can see, remember, we were at 4 meters per second for the first two seconds. Um, constant speed. There's a discontinuity. Then we're at 0 meters per second for, for two seconds. At negative 2, remember this is velocity, so there's direction, negative 2 meters per second um, from 4 seconds to 9 seconds another discontinuity, and then zero meters per second for the last one second segment. 
Okay, so that concludes our um, little worksheet on interpreting graphs. Um, tomorrow, please bring your worksheets in with you. Um, note that there's one additional problem there on the motorcycle. Have a look at it if you get a chance. Uh, we'll work through it in class. And also, we're going to have some fun deriving equations in motion from these graphs. Have a great night.